Catalyst came in, and I, I don't know all the details, but Catalyst took over as the manager of this. And so this is the Catalyst branded company now. And maybe they got better lawyers, I don't know. But the city of Patterson decided we're, we're done, you know, waiting for you to pay us. It's up to almost $1.4 million now. We're going to act to revoke your license. And that's when the attorney said, yeah, the fuck you will. We're going to court. And they walked into court, and the court stopped the city of Patterson from taking away their license. They just temporarily stopped it and brought them back in what we call an order to show cause, um, where both sides have to show why we shouldn't grant a more permanent injunction here, a preliminary injunction, they call it, which lasts throughout the litigation. And the city of Patterson got their ass kicked because they they jumped into an area that I've tried cases on and had you know pulled whatever hair I have left out over these city and county's willingness to milk the cash cow of what they think a cannabis business is, okay? And they'll milk them every way they can. But since 1978 in our Prop 13, citizens of our state have been trying to rein in the government taking your money, um, and this, finally ended in 2010 with a clear statement changed to our constitution and all of our laws. that if you're going to charge somebody a fee or a right or a privilege, the fee has to cover only what it costs to provide the services for that right or privilege. If it raises revenue, it's a tax and you got to go to the voters to get a tax approved. None of that happened here. They snuck this tax rep, this revenue, a uh, positive, Laws in this development agreement that is basically illegal and unconstitutional. And so the company, the, the catalyst company that's a plaintiff here, um, they, they stopped the county, the city from doing this, and they're screaming that this is an illegal and unconstitutional tax and that we want our money back other than what it costs to provide services or, as the city called it, the burden on the city of Patterson to have a cannabis business there. They never told anybody what those burdens were, what they cost. And in the, the pissing matches I've been in, the fees are scrutinized. They're put into a separate earmarked account, and you've got to come back every year and demonstrate that what you charge these people in fees actually match up to what it costs the local jurisdiction to provide the services. Otherwise, it's a tax, and it's got to go to the voters. Now, the other bad thing that happened here is that there was an arbitration clause in this development agreement, uh, and it they're sent to arbitration. Now, we may never find out how this works out, but it does point out that if you're going to get into a cannabis business as an investor or even as someone who's going to be an owner and try to run these things, you need to know what you're going to be paying for and make sure that you obligated to pay it all and then you know budget for it. Because this, the taxes on this, let's just call them taxes, they overwhelm this company's ability to pay them. They're up to 1.4 million in just you know a, a few years here, and I don't. They're going to have to get it wiped out, or this company is going to have a lot of problems um, going forward, and they may in fact have to close down. So it's a cautionary tale. I'm going to throw it back to to the people in the panel who may be familiar with these development agreements and these tax issues. So that's my story for today. Back at you guys. What do you think? This is not how you get weed, man. To the yeah, man, weed for the people. Congratulations to Elliot and Anna on their big, big victory um, against the city of Patterson. Because uh, I, I, I remember oh, yeah. a number of months a months ago when uh, they had a big city council meeting and the city council uh, voted to remove their <laughs> remove their license because they were in this in this pissing match and they were uh, and uh, I know Elliot and Anna were definitely trying to reach a settlement with the city of Patterson, but the city of Patterson was just totally unworkable. And I believe if I I remember correctly they even had some footage um there was some very disgruntled uh city of patterson uh council members and i think one of them was uh was caught actually uh urinating or using a restroom using the restroom outside of their building on their property uh of the business of the cat no. uh, ca yeah the catalyst store in patterson so yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that that uh, uh i think lo local law enforcement in patterson should be serious fine 
I, well, well, I thought I, I just I just think that the local law enforcement in Patterson, since since the, since there's video camera footage of that, they should be arresting this person or mm -hmm. giving them a ticket for uh, for, um, you know, uh, disorderly <laughs> conduct or something like that. You know what I mean? It's actually better than that, Jason. They actually have to register as a sex offender. No way. They, 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 yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, bro. That would be that way. would be the best. That would be that uh, would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, you got if you get caught doing yeah, that, you got to tell your neighbors when you move yep. into a neighborhood. And uh, and Anna, yeah. Anna, Anna, jumped, Anna jumped why into driving the a big truck made an advantage because they can't see that rascal from very far off, right? Yeah, and Anna jumped into the chat and she just said it's kind, it's it, it's basically a really big pissing match. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it well, sounds like that, right? I've never and, been in a pissing um, match. You know, I would never want to be in a pissing match with Elliot for mm -hmm. for one. I I would never <laughs> want that. <laughs> if we and Elliot have a disagreement, you win. <laughs> but but listen, um, back to this you know taxation issue and and the story that that we just went over. One of the things that is frequently brought up when new cities open up cannabis access and business opportunities, um, especially like dispensary storefronts. Um, there's this <clears throat> assumption that having our businesses in their communities is going to, of course, increase crime, and therefore they're gonna need more law enforcement responses and yada, yada, yada. But I, I'm happy to report that time and time again, um, there have been such drastic, like, like, for actually yesterday I was with the city of Modesto and talking with the head of their cannabis department. And he actually shared with me that they had the same assumption that there was like a tax that the city was going to be charging. And um, they assumed that that tax money would be needed to cover the additional law enforcement expenses when in fact, no additional law enforcement has been needed since these dispensaries have opened. And they've actually started seeing that the dispensary operators and the cultivation operators and distros and et cetera, they have great surveillance around their facilities. Fantastic. fantastic security systems so they're actually helping the law enforcement agents with adjacent issues and that in and of itself is is really awesome but i think that this taxation issue we get taxed before we've even had the issue is what i'm mm -hmm. trying to say the city of sacramento a couple of years ago did an entire study um about this 1% tax that was written in. And when you applied for your license, you had to check this box on whether you would agree to paying a 1% tax on your revenue um, that would go to assist law enforcement, or you could decline the tax and wait and see what the actual costs were and then pay that portion. And the city of Sacramento actually got sued for it, mm -hmm. lost. And they had to, um, they couldn't charge that 1% fee because there was no, no issue. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. But as you're building out your laws, make sure you're thinking about and listening for these taxes that they're trying to add on just in case something happens. Just in That's case. That's not okay. A just in case tax. And on that, we're going to go to a commercial mm -hmm. and we're going to be right back.